of life that will really intensify, increase uh, not only understanding but our life in Jesus Christ. Now, this teaching is connected with I have touched about the gift and the commitment of the younger generation. I wish that uh, you have a teacher there and uh, you know, it's a good thing that they'll understand this. But it's a, a meaty study that I'll be showing to you. And the foundation is strong building. I'll be reading to you in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, 1 to verse 10. And one, just key praise and key verse, I would like to expound. And, and you'll be seeing some of the Bible verses that I'll be using. So the Word of God will be the one to make this foundation strong. Now Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear Israel the decrees in laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our ancestors that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you, to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At the time, I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire it did not go up on the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or in earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of, their, of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Verse 10, But showing love to a thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Those who love me and then keep my commandments. Okay, foundation in our journey of faith as very, very strong, the strong foundation. Life on earth is a journey, whether the end is good or well or bad. Now, Christian life is like a race. At the end of the competition, what you put in, your energy, your focus of your mind, and then with all of your heart, you will receive a reward, a victory, or a plaque, or a diploma, whatever it is, or at the end, it might be a loss. A few weeks ago, a few love sports, and you know, there was a, a very tough fight between, uh, you know, uh, Djokovic and, and uh, is that Shonga. They're fighting for the, the, uh, the semi final of the tennis tournament. And you can see that Chonga from France is almost winning just two more points. It's almost just two more points. And then what happened, the other guy was so determined. He used to think as a, as a champion, emotionally strong, physically, and he was able to turn around in Djokovic win the semifinal to compete with Nadal. In another, we can see in that uh, competition that Nadal is uh, waiting to be uh, to win in that place of clay, tennis, uh, playing on the clay, seven championship that break the record of six championship in the tennis, while the other one, within the span of 40 years, if he could win the tennis championship, Djokovic will be the second person after 40 years to be in that category for championship in a successive years, first, second, third, fourth. And we know that Nadal won the victory, got the, you know, the, the blessing. Now, today, I want you to understand that the foundation is very important. There's a man by the name of Apostle Paul who gave us just the, 
not the introduction, basically the opening door to understand how to build your foundation. Here's Paul. No, I strap a blow to my body and make it my slave so that, that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. And Paul said in his word, you know, this guy is very disciplined. His body is an athlete. He's a competitor. He trained himself very well, so he will not be a laughing stock. Or he preached to others, and then he goes on to say, I myself, as a preacher, if I am not be disciplined in the way I behave, in the way I learn the word of God, in the way I have an intimate relationship with God, I might be disqualified. And he goes on to say, I'm like a boxer. I am not beating or I'm not boxing on the air. As an athlete, I put my body into discipline. Now, here is a, conf a confession of a great man of God. If not properly focused, properly guided, and properly disciplined in a service to God, in the context of his word, disqualified, he means he is vulnerable to failure. Now, the message is he's not special compared to you and to me today. And Paul knows exactly and understands properly the price of loving God. The foundation is very, very important from the beginning to the middle to the very end of our journey. Now, I want you to see the first thing that to understand the building of the foundation to become solid is number one, the foundation is very, very important. Now, when I talk about foundation, it is the intent in our hearts to do the work, whether it is spiritual or physical, the motive is very significant. It is very, very important to lay down the right foundation. From the start, when you are determined to serve God, so motive is very important. It is the deciding factor whether you can finish the race from the start. Number one, from the foundation, there must be a genuine motivation in serving God. Now in today's time, now we are in the Christian church, we're talking about in the Christian Christendom, many people that are following the Lord with different motives, diverse motives. And we'll see these motives, just a few of them, I'll cite you this afternoon, in a moment. There are what we call different attitudes, why they follow the Lord. Now the question I will address to you as we'll cite some of this example, what motivates you in serving God? What is your attitude towards your service to God? Two question. what motivates you? What is your attitude? That's a human effort. What motivates you from the inside? Unless those issues are resolved early, there are many of the so-called born-again believers one day will be shocked when God will judge the church when He returns for the second time. And also this will be a time of celebration and rejoicing for many believers when Jesus will return because many will rejoice because of what they have put in in the early stages to the middle when the Lord comes even to the very end of their journey. I want you to know some of this motivation in why people follow the Lord. Book of John 6, 1, all the way to verse 14. Something after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of, of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. In other translation, they see the miracles of God. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite, just one bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother spoke up. 
There's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Had the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled baskets with uh, filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the signs, Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Notice the story, so you have already the picture in your mind. Bunch group of people, 5,000 men, not counting the women, if you put the women plus the children, approximately maybe 12,000 people or 15,000 or more. We don't even know, just, just the men, there are about 5,000 people. And Jesus fed 5,000 people in that moment in time. Now, I want you to see in verse 2, as we go back in verse 2 of chapter 6, I want you to see, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. In other translation, they followed Jesus because of miracles. Take note of the word. Many of these people, they follow Jesus because of miracles. Isn't it? This is the picture of many people inside the churches today. They come to God because they need something. Six months from now, it's, a, it's about six, uh, 24 weeks to go, and we'll be in the Christmas time. We're almost in the Christmas time, in the end of the year, and coming in of the 2013. Now, in this context, you can see Christ is like a Santa Claus being approached in Christmas where they can receive what they need. They approach God like a Santa Claus in Christmas season. You know, context, pastoring there for many years in different churches that I pastor, I founded, and then pastor <coughs> from other denominations. And with all respect to these people, I, I see that I, I love to minister. I have no complaint. I will minister to divine healing, counseling, and I gave them a calling card in Los Angeles. They can call me 24 hours. I was young then. Either for counseling, praying for the sick. I give them 24 hour service. That was my life before. So I pray for healing. And then I have dozens of troubled relationships. Some were unbelievers, some are believers. And by God's grace, they were restored. What a joy and to sad to let you know many of them, they did not follow the Lord after the healing of their marital relationship. They forgot the Lord. Some with financial crisis, bankruptcy, and some with businesses, they became rich. They started giving, Pastor, I will support, I'll give something for the Lord. When they become multimillionaire, they forget to give. And I don't complain because my work is to be a blesser to God. He is the one blessing the people. So they were blessed, some for physical healing. Now when all these needs are met, what will happen? They will see God and worship God when problems arise again. In other words, after a lapse of three months, six months, Pastor, I have a need. You know, being a, a, a man of God, you cannot say no. Because we are servants, the word servants, you are under obligation to someone that is higher than you. You cannot be a servant if you not obey. So I have no problem with that. I continue to pray for the sickness and their problems because they forgot the Lord. So God is being approached like a restaurant, you know, like a restaurant after your order is given. You take it away and satisfy yourself. And God is not remembered unless they were hungry again. Unless that, uh, you know, <clears throat> according to their availability, they will approach God once again. But God is not part of their life. God is just a choice when he is needed. You know what? That is a sad reality 
of the nature of those who desire to follow the Lord, but what they desire is what they can get, not what they can give, not what they, what they can sacrifice and serve the Lord. So that intention is sad. Now, John, verse 22 to 27 of chapter 6. Thank you, Nathan. The next day, the crowd that is staying on the opposite shore of the lake, on the opposite shore, realized that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten, the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Remember that? They went there. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, oh, they looked for Jesus again. They got into the boats and went to Capernaum across the sea and searched for Jesus. Look at verse 85. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs I perform or healings or miracles that I perform, but because, second intention, you ate the loaves and had your, your fill. Number two intentions of Christians, you can see here, that the intention of seeking God is for physical appetite. From Tiberias to Capernaum. And Jesus said that to these, you want to come to see me because you're looking for me, not because you saw the miracles. Miracles is finished. Physical healing is over. Religion, marital relationship is finished. Now they're looking for a higher thing, and that is for the appetite of the stomach. Now you can see a question, it seems they're concerned. How did you get here, Jesus? You can see there. The people acted, and it seems like they really concerned of God to follow him. But the people are concerned, take note of this, of perishable things, more than the eternal things. This is one of the big reasons why Christianity, why Christianity is losing her grip upon the church goer because majority are aiming for temp temporary satisfaction in physical appetite. Now they're switched. Their interest from the physical healing, from the emotional healing, they are now going to the food, and it will go to clothing, and it will go to possessions, and investments, and fun time, and everything. But Jesus is the third and fourth choices. <clears throat> 1970, 71, or 72, were in the Bible college, Bible school, in the early days of Christ in the Philippines. There was a brilliant guy who was a a scholar from America who was the founder of the organization. There are about 120 students in the Bible school, missionary, missionary training graduates. Many of them later on, many of them, it's not a, a report that uh, we, I deride them, but there's a caring there. Many of them, when they dedicate to the Lord, I surrender all, they, they left their job. Many of them are professionals from Mapua, from UP, and Secretary of Antonino of the uh, uh, running for president during that time. These are mostly professional, manager of one of the biggest uh, mall in Makati during that time, a Chinese. Many of them are professional, very few are just high school graduates, maybe just three or five high school graduates. Many of them forsook the call of God and venture in the desires of their earthly dreams of their hearts. There's nothing wrong to feed your family, to have, you know, what you need. They become truly successful in the world standards, but the Lordship of Jesus Christ was replaced with the temporary and earthly satisfaction. I don't know for now, after 40 plus years, if there are only maybe less than 20 who are left behind serving the Lord up to this moment in time. Those are the cream of the crop. And there's another group, another group. So you can see, where are the others who experienced God's love, who sang in tears and fasted, I surrender all. So very important, genuine motive is a prerequisite of understanding the price of loving God and make your foundation strong. Very important. So motive has to be 
resolve and to be understood early before you can go farther. What is my intention? What is my motivation? Until you resolve it, something in the in-between is a little bit shaky. Number two, serving God is in Luke 4, 28 to 30. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. 